Here's my tiny ballista. Hee hee. And here's my giant crossbow. Hey, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking the same thing. It could use some more power. It does awesome against these one inch boards, but you just make them a little tiny bit thicker. And we start having trouble. I'm cutting off the top of my head. You're not missing much. Anyways, I got some ideas on how to make it more powerful, but it's gonna be kind of pricey. So I wanted to make a small prototype, probably the smallest giant crossbow I ever made. So I can prove my concept and I can show it to my wife and say, see? Let me spend the money. And if it goes well, we're in the clear to make the big boy. So here we go, hope you guys like it. So to be safe, I'm starting with the prototype of the prototype. If the real prototype didn't work, I just, oh, I'd be so embarrassed. And this thing is made out of the most goofy ingredients possible. Got the fiberglass rods cut in half and zip tied together. Little $2 pulleys, not a bearing in sight as you can hear. But hey, in spite of this thing being made of actual garbage, she goes. It was pretty good too, nice little toy. Of course not very powerful at this scale, but I think the concept is approved. So on to the, not the big boy, the uh, the medium boy. On to the medium boy. And we are not messing around with these limbs. I'm going for it guys, we're doing spring steel. I thought it would be a good idea to elevate the limbs above the track so that when the string runs across, it's like just barely, barely kissing the top of the track, just reduce drag as much as possible. And I thought the best way to do that would be to make the limbs two different pieces of steel and then just kind of like bolt them into place. Kind of like this, two different individual pieces for each limb instead of like a single prod going across the front. There ended up being a whole host of problems with that that I could get into at some point, but just take my word for it guys. I worked a lot and it didn't. So yeah, all the cutting and the grinding and the polishing and stuff on that first set of limbs is pretty much entirely a waste of time. But at the very least, it did lead to me learning something. It's actually very, very cool. And that I'll be taking with me through the whole entire rest of my building career. And that is the poor man's water cooling setup. Who would have thought you could just multiply your quality of life 50 or 100 times with a couple of little spring clamps and a garden hose. Having taken these springs out of a truck, they're already hardened and tempered. So you don't really want them to get hot at all or you could ruin the temper and you'd have to redo do it yourself, which is going to be a total hassle. But if you can keep them cool while you're cutting, you can avoid that whole mess. And you can see here, the steel doesn't even get warm. It's so nice being able to just make your cut straight through and not have to stop every 15 or 20 seconds to dunk your piece of steel in a kiddie pool. This, this is it. This is sick. Another unexpected added benefit. Really at the end of any day where I'm cutting steel, I'll get in the shower and I'll, you know, and the metal boogers, just thousands, thousands of metal boogers just all over the shower. I do spray them out with, with the shower head. Don't worry guys, I'm not some kind of animal. But I'm always like, okay, so all that metal's in my boogers. Is none of it in my lungs? Probably maybe there is some. But here's the thing, at the end of the day of cutting those limbs out entirely, I get in the shower, pew, pew, blow the boogs out, and there's nothing, nope, no metal. Not a single nugget. I mean, there was pl there's plenty of boogers. Trust me, guys, I got plenty of boogers, but no metal boogers. Very cool. So it makes the cutting go way faster. No metal boogers, so your lungs are happy. I'm telling you guys, the poor man's water cooling setup, that's where it's at. So here I'm making a frame to hold on to what was initially going to be the two limbs on the front and two limbs in the back, actually, too. Which, thankfully, even though I ended up not going with that idea of the four limbs, this frame here still works with what I did end up going with, so I'll show you that later. Nothing super duper special. I split this square tubing in half down the middle to get a couple of U-channels. The tubing that I just had lying around is just purely by the grace of God, the perfect inner diameter to hold half of the leaf spring once it's split down the middle. So hey, shout out God, very cool. I cut this angle steel into four little brackets, two of which are going to attach the frame to the wooden stock and the two on the front is where I'm going to attach the stirrup to. So with those welded up I got this wooden piece here. This is the exact width that the stock is going to be once I make it. So I'm using this to make sure that the beams that connect the front and the back U channel together are the perfect width apart. Welding, welding, more welding. Some cleanup, gotta do it. Pretty boring. I'm gonna show you too much of that. But yeah, here it is. Looks like trash with no paint but I'm gonna paint it, so. Perfect fit for those new limbs. Look at that slide, beaut. This one's a little more snug, but that ain't a problem. And now you can see here with these little brackets I made out of some flat bar, it's all coming together. <laughs> Oh, this part is cool. I'm sure tons of builders knew about this, but it was new to me. I can't tell you how many cobalt drill bits I've destroyed trying to drill through a, just a little tiny piece of hardened steel. But these masonry bits here, holy smokes. It might have been 
14 bucks for like 10 of them. And this hardened steel that I'm drilling is 3 eighths thick. That's that's more than I would ever want to tackle with anything else. So these masonry bits here have a carbide edge, this little spade on the end here. Now it does destroy the bit because shocker, masonry bits are made for masonry, not for hardened steel. Got like one hole per bit, but I'll take that any day over four bits per hole, that's for sure. I'll be using those holes to attach the little brackets that I made to each end of the limbs. And here's something pretty cool, that little notch in the limb that's left over from the hole in the middle of the spring and you cut it through while I drill and tap into the U-channel and that lets me use one of these stubby little hex allen screws to lock the limb into the U-channel. What can I say? Perfect. Shout out God. Little paint job. I was feeling creative so I did a uh, matte black. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Comes out looking real crispy, actually. With that all dry, we can slide in the limbs, rivet each of them brackets on. A shout out to all my OGs who remember the trick of putting the nut on the on the rivet post so you can extend the reach of the riveter. Dang, I haven't used that trick in a long time. That's wild. So there, so far, is what I've been working on, guys. Pretty clean looking, if I do say so myself. And this is actually where the video was gonna end, but I kind of taken so long to post, I felt bad about, like, not really being able to show you guys anything particularly exciting. So, hatch me a little plan. I am sure and hope no one remembers this relic. This is from a time where I was not good at what anything. This bad boy, emphasis on bad, this thing is terrible. I spent a heck of a lot of time on and it was just like not good. That's pretty cute. Historically, I've not been great at crossbows. But while the whole shooting aspect of that crossbow is garbage, the stock and the trigger mechanism are actually usable. I ended up having to modify the trigger mechanism a little bit just to beef it up. These limbs have a little more power than four spring clamps. It was a real process getting these blocks off of here. And it was definitely a pretty rough fitting getting the new hardware on there. She's not a looker, but you guys will see soon enough. She goes. Real quick, for the string stops, I put some spear gun rubber over some bolts. And I stick those in the supports. Here's a stirrup that ended up being pretty much useless because I'm not tall enough to stand the crossbow up and just pull a cocking string all the way above my head, just disembowel my rotator cuffs. It ended up being way more effective just to stand on the on the back limbs. Just row that thing back. This thing is tough. I'm only doing this one time. I don't know how much how much punishment this trigger mechanism can handle. Oh boy. I don't even really want to get close to it, so I'm gonna kind of shoot far away. Oh, ooh, that is a good punch too. I gotta hit the foam. And it just hit the edge. One more time. Let's freaking go. This is not my usual foam target. This stuff is a lot more dense. about that much. Not that that means anything to you. I'm building courage, but this thing is very scary. I'm gonna do one more so you guys can see the action. We are done. Dunzo. Ah, oh, I forgot. I did buy some real crossbow bolts, but I'm not so sure about the fit. I'm gonna give it a try. So there it was guys, hope you liked part one of the video. Seems like it's turned out pretty cool, so if you wanna see the rest of the build, make sure to subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching, I'll talk to you later, bye.